have the Sunday School from the Congolese uh, congregation, and they will be singing a song for us. Today is World Communion Sunday. So World Communion Sunday, we celebrate as a people, we celebrate as a church, no matter what tradition that we come from. So Claire and your class, if you can please come. of the church come and help us worship so I want to thank you Claire and everyone in your Sunday school for helping us uh, to, and remind us that we are a world church that we're not just here in North America but rather the gospel has been spread around the world so thank you so much Claire cell phone. Uh, how does the cell phone run you're right. Can you tell how much power it has with a flashlight on? A lot. What's a lot? How much is a lot? I would say 90 to 180 to 90. You can tell that by looking at it? Yes. You can? How? That's not true at all. It works just the same all the way down to 5%, doesn't it? 5? Yeah. It does. Okay. <laughs> it works all the way down to about 
And why, how do we charge this thing? With a charger. It gets recharged, right? It plugs into the wall. It gets recharged. Very good. Today, Sal is going to talk about our Bible study. Our Bible story today is out of Luke. And the disciples are asking Christ to give them more faith. I need to have stronger faith. And Jesus tells them, you don't need more faith. You can have the faith the size of a mustard seed, and it will get you through. It will sustain you. That is true. And what he does, he tells a story about a, a man out in the fields working for his, for his yeah, that's Jackson. Little bitty, like about the size of a sesame seed, okay? About the same size. But you don't have to have an abundance of faith, you just have to have faith, okay? He tells a story about a man out in the fields who works all day in the fields, and then he comes inside and he works the whole time for his, for his master. And he doesn't actually sit down and rest or do anything else, he just keeps going and going. And it's because he has faith, okay? And you don't have to have and too much faith. The disciples didn't need more faith. They just need to have faith. Okay? Now, Jesus also teaches us that we eventually run out. We can run out of faith and it has to be recharged. How would we recharge our faith? Prayer. That's a good one. Okay, well, how else can we have a, a recharge our faith? Thomas? Reading the Bible? Jackson? Uh, as long as it's about Christ, yeah, we're talking about faith. But yes, yes, that's a very good answer. Yes, yes. Just keep your faith. How do we, and that's how we recharge our faith, like we recharge our phone, okay? You don't have to have a lot of power in your phone or in your heart or in your faith, but you have to have it. And we recharge it by coming to church, coming to Sunday school, praying, talking with God by ourselves, and sharing faith with others, okay? Bow your heads. Dear God, thank you for today. Thank you for our faith. Thank you for Jesus who taught us how to recharge our faith. In your son's name I pray. Amen. Amen. Do you remember back to the beginning of the pandemic and people thought they were going to run out of toilet paper? Did any of you run out? Don't answer that question if you did. But there were a massive amount of people nationwide running to the store, buying up all the toilet paper that was in the stores because they thought they didn't have enough. And then, do you remember last winter, Valentine's Day, and that whole entire week? That's when we had the freeze of 2021. People were once again at the grocery stores or whatever stores that was close to them and buying up things that they thought they were going to run out of. They thought they didn't have enough at home. And then we really didn't have enough power to go around. We didn't have enough water flowing through our faucets and our toilets at home because it was a real crisis. But sometimes we all get worked up thinking that we do not have enough of something. The passage for today that we have Jerry and Juan read for us talks about not having enough. The disciples who had been with Jesus asked Jesus, give us more faith. We do not have enough, Jesus. We want more faith. To put this, con uh, this passage in context, 
If you have been in church for the past several weeks, we have been talking about Luke and the messages, the parables of Jesus as told by Luke. But to understand this passage, we really need to begin from the beginning of the chapter chapter 17 because jesus had been talking to the disciples telling them about loving your enemies about not being a stumbling block to somebody about forgiving someone when they sin even if that person sins against you seven times in one day jesus said forgive them now, before we judge the disciples, put this passage in real life situation. So we have Steve. I always use Steve. He's a good target. He's right there. And Steve's brother, for example, sinned against Steve. He did something bad. And his brother comes and says, Steve, please forgive me. Jesus said, Steve, you must forgive your brother. And an hour later, his brother does something different. And it hurts Steve's feeling. And the brother comes back and says, Steve, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do it. Jesus said, Steve, you need to forgive your brother. And the brother continues on to do it over and over again. So Steve is like, Jesus, give me faith to deal with my brother because I cannot deal with him on my own. Right? Isn't that the right situation that we may find ourselves in? Because Sometimes it is hard to have faith. It is hard to forgive somebody when they have sinned against you. So that is what the disciples are asking Jesus. Jesus, if you want us to do these things, if you want me to forgive my brother who has sinned against me many times, I need more faith. If you want me to love my enemy, I need more faith. And so Jesus tells the disciples and said, no, you do not need any more faith, Steve. You already have enough faith. You already have enough faith to be a faithful servant, to be a faithful disciple. And then Jesus goes on to tell the, the story about roles and responsibilities, about being a master, about being a servant. The point of this story is that it doesn't matter how big of a role, how big of a responsibility, how big of a faith you think you have, or how small of a responsibility of a role that you have, or how little of a faith that you think you have. You have enough to be faithful. You and I have enough faith to do what it is that we have been called to. During the beginning of the pandemic, when everybody was running to the store buying up all the toilet papers, people didn't put their faith, you see, in Charmin, in Soft Angels, or whatever brand that you use. And that's right. Because the point here is placing our faith, placing our faith in the right thing, placing our faith in the right person, and that is 
Jesus. Because you see, it is your faith that has brought you here this morning. No matter how little, how big your faith is, your faith has brought you here this morning. And it may be it was your grandmother's faith. Maybe it was your great-grandmother's faith. Maybe it was your neighbor's faith that helped you along the way. That has made you into what you are today. The point here is that Jesus is trying to tell us this morning, trying to share with us this morning. Faith is something that cannot be measured. Faith is something that cannot be quantified. Faith is something that is not visible, that you cannot contain. But rather, faith, the right type of faith and who it is that you put your faith in is what matters. And that is Christ. And that is God alone. Jesus reminds us this morning that your faith is enough. This week, I've seen many of you here at the church. Your faith has been at work. I am reminded that I saw Jerry here this week. He was outside working in the garden. I saw the other Jerry working his faith, working in the food pantry. And then I saw Joe mowing the lawn. I saw Troy trimming the hedges. That's just some of you. I see Dave here too many times. He needs to do a to-do list at home for Mary. But everyone here at the church, and that's only some of the men. I don't want to begin with the women because I see them way too many times. It's like every day I see people here. And so that is your faith at work. We all have roles and we all have responsibilities. We all, it all takes us as a people and as a church and as a community to do our role in order for us to be the church. It is not just one person that shows up on Monday and does it all. Rather, it takes all of us. Some of us are not here at this moment because we have something to do in the kitchen. So everybody has a role to do. Jesus' message for us, don't try to quantify how much faith you need. You already have faith. You just need to have faith in me. You just need to have faith in Jesus. You just need to put your faith in Christ because that is who you need. Because you know, we go through a lot of challenges. We go through a lot of life's difficulties. We go through a lot of storms, and it is difficult. It is hard for us to try to overcome it alone. We can't. It is impossible to climb mountains. But Jesus is saying here that we just need to have faith in him because it is with Christ that will enable us to do the things that we cannot accomplish 
on our own. We need to put our faith in Jesus, in Christ alone, and it is through him that will take us through the storm, that will take us through the wilderness. Because don't you think that when Jesus and the disciples had gathered in that upper room, the disciples didn't have that much faith. And that was proven when they all deserted Jesus. But at the table, Jesus knew what was going to take place. But he chose to break bread with them anyways. Because you see, our faith is not dependent on us on how much or how little it is that we have, but rather it is dependent on the grace of God. That is why you are here today, and that is why we celebrate as a church the sacrament of Holy Communion. It is the grace of God that has brought us here today. Today, there are many people around the world gathering at the table because they have faith in Christ. That though we are many, we are one. That though we are different, we are united. That though we have many traditions, many cultures, we come from many different backgrounds, here at the table, we are one because we celebrate our oneness with our God, with Jesus the Christ, and with the Holy Spirit. So we remember this day that Jesus and his friends did gather in an upper room and Jesus there broke a bread broke a loaf of bread and gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat, for this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, the cup of grace. He blessed it, he poured it out for them, and he said, this is the cup of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this, do it often, in remembrance of me. Let us pray. The body of Christ has been broken for you. The cup of grace has been poured out for you.